G'day there. Look at what I've got today. This is a leaf shelter made by the larvae of the Currajong bag moth. It's sometimes known as the Currajong leaf tear or even the Currajong leaf roller. But I reckon Currajong bag moth is a great name for the insect which creates these um, leaf shelters. Let's take a closer look. Welcome to One Minute Bugs. I'm Dennis Crawford. But first, the plant. These leaves are from the Currajong tree, which is a plant in the genus Brachychiton. But the Currajong um, bag moth, or the larvae of the Currajong bag moth, also make similar shelters on the leaves of other trees, such as the Illawarra flame tree and the Queensland bottle tree, all of which are plants in the genus Brachychiton. The Currajong tree's natural range is from around Townsville in Queensland down to about northeastern Victoria. But if you look at this map from the Atlas of Living Australia, you can see that the Currajong bag moth is found all the way down to the southern coast of Victoria. You may wonder how that happens. Well, it's pretty simple, really. The Currajong tree and the Illawarra flame tree are very popular in cultivation. So the trees are now found well outside their natural range. So the moths have either followed the tree or there's been eggs on trees or existing leaf shelters or something like that. Many insects have spread in this country in a similar manner. This is the adult moth, a rather lovely insect with a wingspan of about 20 millimetres. The female moth lays her eggs on the leaves and the larvae join leaves together with silken threads to create the leaf shelters. The larvae are green and smooth with a, a few sparse hairs and they grow to about 25 millimetres long. The larvae tend to remain inside their bag shelters, feeding on the leaves inside, and sometimes they do have to venture out to find other leaves, um, and they do so at night. Larvae also pupate in their shelters. If you break open a leaf shelter right now, uh, late autumn going into winter, you'll find a right hole mess inside, lots of dried skeletonized leaves, a whole lot of frass, and some pupae. The pupae are about 12 millimetres long. When the moths eventually emerge from the pupae, they find a mate to restart the life cycle. But is the Currajong bag moth a pest? Actually, I've got another question. Have you subscribed to the channel yet? I know I bang on about this, but the uh, YouTube analytics tell me that about 80% of the people who watch my videos aren't subscribed. If more people subscribe, YouTube will recommend my videos to other people so they can get to see this content. Otherwise, they won't know it exists. Rant over. So getting back to my question, is the Currajong bag moth a pest? Well, the short answer is in the bush, no. And in gardens, it can be. The long answer is the moth only breeds on a few species of trees in the genus Brachychiton and has probably been doing so for hundreds of thousands of years, if not millions of years. But in gardens and municipal parks, the trees are often solitary. So if moths do find the tree, they'll tend to just keep breeding on the same tree. If the plant is only a year or two old and there are a large number of caterpillars, every leaf on the tree may end up being damaged and that's no good for the plant. The trick is not to let this happen. If you have a small tree and the leaves are starting to be joined together into these bag shelters, I would cut them off or break them open and get rid of the caterpillars in some way. On the other hand, a large healthy tree can support quite a population of these bag moths without being damaged too much, although they do appear unsightly to some people. What would I do? If I had a large tree with some of these Currajong bag moth shelters on them, I wouldn't worry too much. Not unless there was, say, a sudden increase in numbers of bag shelters, then I might cut some off. I wouldn't be cutting them all off because the moth is here to stay in southern Victoria. Well, as long as the trees are here. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and stay tuned for the next video, which will be the next in the series of Bug Basics. This time we'll be looking at insect life cycles. So this will help you to identify the juvenile stages of beneficial insects and also give you some clues on how to discourage pest insects. 
Thanks for watching.